better than two Paul Rudds. I'll tell you what, literally nothing. Except maybe two little baby Ant-Mans. What is up, Netflix fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the brand new Paul Rudd series starring Paul Rudd. And then Paul Rudd again, living with yourself. Can't wait to talk about this. So many Netflix reviews this weekend. Be on the lookout for even more. But right now, living with yourself. Let's do it. So a man undergoes an experimental treatment to improve his life, only to be replaced by a new and improved version of himself and must fight for his wife, his career, and his very identity. All right, let's get the negatives out of the way first, because frankly, there's not that many. I <laughs> I really enjoyed this series, and I'm kind of spoiling myself right off the bat, but here's what I wanted from the ending that I did not get. There are a few storylines in there that are not quite wrapped up in the way that they need to be, but I hold out hope if we get more of this show. I don't know what's going on with season two. I don't even know if Paul Rudd's doing that kind of thing because he's a very busy man. He literally needs to clone himself in real life to continue to do what he's doing because he's always showing up in movies and now television shows. So if we get a season two, I guarantee these are plot points that are going to be addressed in that season. If this is a standalone season one, then I'm going to have a lot of of questions. Not questions that kind of compromise what I loved about the show, but questions that make me feel kind of, eh, uncertain storylines, because it's like they're going somewhere, and they don't really hit on them again. One in particular, I'll say without spoiling anything, the storyline with his job, it goes in places, I found it to be very interesting, and then come episode 7-8, just kind of stop focusing on it. That upset me a little bit. But once again, season two, we're going to save things for that. Another minor thing that I was feeling while I was watching the show is just the fact that something is missing to take this from what it ended up being, which is a really high quality show that I thoroughly enjoyed, to another level to a level of some of the best television of the year. Maybe it's the uh, overwhelming, and I use that term lightly, amount of melodrama in there. They do get a bit melodramatic, not in your face, but just something I'm like, okay, I could use less of that. And it is a bit quirky. I mean, it's Paul Rudd. It's about Paul Rudd and his clone Paul Rudd. So what do you expect? There's going to be quirky elements, but there was something in there that was just not present. Something that, well, maybe they even hit on it in the last episode because the last episode, there's a bit of darkness to it. This darkness that was not present in the other episodes. I mean, it gets intense and emotional at times. Absolutely. It's dealing with things that everyone has to deal with. It's coming to terms with yourself, realizing how much better either you used to be or some people think this version of you is when it's not actually you. These are things that, not the clone thing, but these are things that people have to deal with on a daily basis basis and that tends to get dark but in the final episode episode eight there is something that almost happens uh, something that happens in the episode and I'm like wow we're going there okay then and I like that level of darkness if that would have been present throughout the other episodes I think this show could have had a bit more edge to it which would have made it even better than it already was okay I I'm tiptoeing around the fact that I had a great time with this show a great time and it all really falls on the shoulders of Paul Rudd. Do I have to say that? Because he is in the show twice, and he's playing two different versions of himself, and when we see actors do this, there's always that minor visual cue that tells us, okay, this is that character, and then that's the other character, or there's just the, the minor quirks that each character has to themselves, and even though one is a clone, the other is not, they do showcase that, and Paul Rudd does a great job at playing each version slightly different exactly what he needed to do. And I said this in my clicking and streaming podcast the other day, and I meant it. Uh, when Paul Rudd is serious, I may even prefer him to when he's doing comedy. Now, that's crazy to say, because Paul Rudd, I mean, he's one of the funniest dudes in Hollywood. And when he is funny, when he is kind of silly, it works. It works super well. I mean, we obviously know him from Ant-Man, but all of these other comedies he's been popping up in for 20 years, from Anchorman to, to Knocked, I mean, just, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous level of, of quality filmmaking here that he's showing up in. So clearly the guy's got to be pretty good at his job. We know this, but he does showcase the perfect balance here of comedy and emotion. And he gets really emotional. And I am slowly starting to turn Paul Rudd in my head into the Netflix guy. We had The Fundamentals of Caring, which is still one of my favorite, just heartfelt, lovely, 
lovely movies on Netflix. I love going back and rewatching that film. And now you have Living With Yourself. It's like anything you want to cast this guy in on Netflix, continue to do it because he is fantastic. He carries this show. But everyone does a good job. There are a few characters that pop up I needed to see more from. It all comes back to the fact that we may see more uh, eventually down the line. There was one story point in particular, and that was the marriage that they had to kind of hone in and focus on, especially at the end. We're trying to figure out which version of the character of Miles is the one that um, needs to end up with the wife, is the one that deserves to end up with the wife. Now, obviously, at first glance, you're like, well, it's the original version, of course, but this guy is dealing with a lot more at first, at first, than our cloned version is dealing with because he is the one facing the struggles. The clone comes out and he's like, okay, I'm the good one. I'm going to continue to do the great things. And uh, it makes for a very interesting storyline, a storyline that is slightly predictable, but predictable in the best way. I thought the humor was great, whether it was the in-your-face jokes or the subtle humor. Both styles worked very well. And speaking of style, this is a kind of a stylistic show. It's very subtly stylistic. It's not in-your-face. Just down to the title sequence, it's, it is what it is. But it works really well. And one thing I really liked, the score that kept coming back in every single episode almost, it would come in, I'm like, yeah. I like that. He's kind of upbeat and it has a different feel to it. And it's just so many elements of the show that come together and make it quality entertainment. You're laughing. You care. The final episode when the stakes are super high, way higher than I anticipated. I care a lot about both versions. You understand what one is going through and then you really understand what the other is going through. And you're like, I don't know who to root for. Can I tap out and say Paul Rudd? Because that's the answer. But I give kudos to Timothy Greenberg for bringing us a series that is just straight up similar, but different. So different. Dealing with similar uh, uh, themes and very predictable story beats in a way, but so out there and weird. And it's like, well, how did the clone thing happen in the first place? We don't care. All we care about is our story. They don't have to go into detail and explain these things that frankly don't matter towards the story. He's telling his story and, and there is a backstory there. There is a bit of lore in this living with yourself universe that maybe we'll dive uh, even further deep into in the next season because there is a lot that goes down in the latter episodes talking about how did this happen in the first place for sure, but these are all things that serve as kind of a backdrop to what's going on in their life with their wife, with their marriage. They're dealing with everyday problems that we as humans deal with, and we emotionally resonate to that and to this character, to both characters, I think because the struggles that he's going through are very well showcased in this show. I felt for him when I needed to feel for him. I thought the filmmaking was super solid, like I said, and I had a great time with this show. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely recommend watching this one on Netflix, and I'm going a solid 8 out of 10 and 80% with my score for living with yourself. What can I say? I'm kind of a sucker for Paul Rudd, but eight episodes, each episode clocking in around 20-something, 30-something minutes. This was a quick watch, a swift watch. I got all the way through it. It's not game-changing filmmaking, but it didn't have to be. It served its purpose. It was an absolutely great time. One of the more fun times I've had watching a show on Netflix, and it really nails the comedy. That's very important, but you have Paul Rudd's Plural, Paul Rudds. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Another review coming out later today. That is for The Laundry Mat. And if you check this channel out, you see many more Netflix reviews this weekend along with Zombieland and Malficient. Those things are on the channel as well. You guys are truly the best. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this content, be sure to leave it a thumbs up. It helps this channel in the long run. I'll see you soon.